Hello guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be discussing about open system interconnection, which is majorly known as OSI reference model. So, before we understand what is OSI reference model, let's try to understand what is the need of OSI reference model. So, in today's internet world, we, we, we access a banking website and we use it, we try to access a YouTube server or like some any live video streaming servers or we use social we have, we try to access social networking sites and we sometimes upload files to different websites and download files so we do a wide variety of activities over internet so for everything there is a data transmission involved so in any communication there is a there is a possibility the obvious possibility is there are two endpoints Endpoint 1 and endpoint 2. So endpoint 1 and endpoint 2 may be a client to server architecture or a node to node architecture. It can be anything. So in this in this internet world we use as, as we know that we use it for multiple purposes. So there is a huge data transmission that occur every second. So in that perspective, in that process, there are chances that Whenever endpoint 1 sends some data to the endpoint 2, the data may be lost in between. That is, some of the data may be lost or partial loss of data or it may be a complete loss of data. Or the, the data may be accessed by some endpoint 3 and used it for illegal purposes or you can say exploitation of data. So there are multiple possibilities that can occur, like negative possibilities that can occur over data transmission. So to avoid this, we have OSI reference model which addresses these issues we discussed so far and guarantees a data transmission that to be occurred without any data loss or without any error. Now let's see how OSI reference model address these issues and what is the architecture of OSI reference model. So in OSA reference model architecture, so obviously there are two endpoints in which, uh, like involved. One of the endpoint is always called a source and other endpoint is always called a destination because that's where the communication should happen, right? So what exactly we call a communication? For example, this person X is trying to send data to the Y or trying to receive some information from Y. When we call a complete communication, when X sends data to the Y, and data sends an acknowledgement to it. That is, the data is received or a response to X. So this is a complete communication. In this whole communication process between X and Y, we have so many steps involved. Like so, so many challenges that to be addressed, right? Like we discussed error, error control, or data loss, uh, I mean data loss control, I mean without any data loss, the information to be sent to the destination, so it can be either way x to y or y to x. So when x requests something from y, y, y sends a response to x. So this is what the communication is, right? So all these challenges should be addressed and there should be a proper data transfer that should happen between x and y, endpoint 1 and endpoint 2 in our case. So these are all the challenges and activities that has to be done by some model that is OSI reference model. So OSI reference model helps in this. Let's try understanding what is the architecture of OSI reference model. So OSI reference model is a layered architecture. So where we have seven layers. Why it is layered architecture? Because one single unit handling all these uh, stuff like error control, flow control, data control and uh, uh, for example endpoint 1 is sending some data of 100 bytes let's say and endpoint 2 may not be able to receive that much of data. It may receive only 50 bytes at a time. So 50 bytes of data cannot be received, right? That will be lost, right? So these kind of uh, uh, maximum transmission unit controls. So all this stuff cannot be addressed by a single unit. It can be a complex task for it. So for that purpose, open source, open system interconnection has a layered architecture where every layer has given some functionalities and involved in, involved in some activities and obey some protocols.
now let's see what are those layers so when i say layers there are seven layers that are present in osa reference model that is application layer that is layer number 7 layer number 6 is presentation layer and layer number 5 is session layer and layer number 4 is transport layer and layer number 3 is network layer layer number 2 is data link layer and layer number 1 is physical layer and the same will be present on the destination also as described in this diagram like we have application layer to physical layer and application layer to physical layer in both the endpoints so there is a reason why i have started it from 7 and ended it 1 so we will understand that eventually so now let's try to understand what exact how exactly the data flows in this osa reference model so how exactly it happens is whenever i try to communicate for example let's take let's take www.youtube.com so i am trying i am making a query over website which appends a http protocol to it let's understand what are the protocols also so https colon double slash www dot youtube dot com so i i open browser and i type it i get a youtube uh, page right so that youtube page will be present at the server that is endpoint two here endpoint one and here it is endpoint two so endpoint one is starting the request so for the request endpoint one is the source for the request that is raised because it is started from here because the one which is starting is source one where the uh, data ends is destination right for the request endpoint 1 is the source and endpoint 2 is the destination for request so let me write here it's a request this is destination so whenever i type www.youtube.com it automatically appends a https protocol to it and then it will send the request to that youtube.com web server so this is initiated at application layer so you must have understood now why i have started from 7 so application layer is the one which is responsible for an endpoint to access the services over internet that is i am able to access www.youtube.com from application layer that is from a browser so when i make that then it will try to find out where this server is located that this particular uh, web server is located and it will try to find out the ip of that web server and it will get the proper page associated with it so this process how this it gets ip address of this youtube.com is it uses dns for that domain name system that is one of the functionality of application layer and here you can see https is appended that is hyper text transfer protocol that is you are trying to send the request in such a way that it should point to a different web server web page so https is also a protocol of application layer and not only this there are multiple protocols like http bgp and many more like simple mail transfer protocol which is helpful for sending the mails uh, and writing uh, which is which are, which are helpful in exchange of mail to happen and we have ftp file transfer protocol and when i am trying to upload a image or upload a page or download a page, download data so then this ftp sftp are useful so in this process for the request this is a application server is a in entry point and this is a the end point one is the source and then it is the request is sent to presentation layer so what presentation layer will do is so when when application layer sends the data to the presentation layer it will send it will, it will append a application header to the payload so payload here is the request data that you are trying to send and application header is application layer header that is appended to the payload now this whole is a payload for presentation layer so presentation layer on the source that is endpoint 1 
will get this information and adds a presentation layer header first thing to the existing payload that is payload and application layer header and it is responsible for some other activities like compression or encryption. So here it is more about data representation. So I am sending a request, the request should not be understandable to the to a person sitting in between endpoint 1 and endpoint 2, right? So for that uh, reason, we have a concept called encryption where the data will be encrypted that nobody else can understand in between without any public or private key associated with that data or payload and that encrypted data will be sent over uh, sent to the uh, uh, that encryption data along with presentation header will be sent to the session layer so here i will be uh, so uh, so let's 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 completely understand first so application layers will send the data to the presentation layer presentation layer will send the data to the session layer then to the transport layer then to the network layer then to the data link layer then to the physical layer then this data is sent to internet this is internet so entry point of the request is application layer exit point of the request is physical layer on the source side that is who is initiating the request and this will hit physical layer here i mean this will communicate to physical layer here it will send to data link layer network layer transport layer session layer presentation layer and application layer end points to i mean destination uh, is application layer of the end point to for the request which is this Again, then it will find out the response associated with this. When the response is sent for a response, this is the source. Endpoint 2 is the source and it will be sent like this with the headers associated like this, 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 then internet response request, request. So this response will be reached to the physical layer, then to data link, network, transport, session, presentation, application. This is the whole whole point. Why, uh, how explain this is, you will understand. Response destination. So request today source is endpoint 1. Request destination is endpoint 2. Response source is endpoint 2. Response destination is endpoint 1. So this whole is called as communication. Now let's come back to the point, or come back to where we paused, like application to presentation layer. So now when when this data reaches like this to the application layer of this right, then it will understand what protocol is used here. Is it SMTP or is it HTTP or HTTPS or FTP? Based on that, it will handle the request. So now you have understood what is the role of a application layer in request side and response side. So based on the protocol associated with it, it will try to handle the request and tries to send back the response in a uh, comp uh, like uh, compliance uh, protocol way. So, so I mean, uh, based on the protocol with which the request is received, it will try to send the response. Now, presentation is layer is doing some compression and encryption here, right? So when the data goes like this, then internet physical layer, data link layer like this, then presentation layer will remove the headers associated with it, like presentation header and it will decrypt, decrypt the information or decompress the information. So that is the role of presentation layer and the destination. So whatever the compression or encryption is done, that is decompressed or decrypted. Then the, I mean, it, I mean, I'm just giving at a time, but it won't happen directly. It will, it will go in a flow. Now the information comes to session layer and uh, coming to the protocols that are associated in presentation layer is, we have MIME. So more or less application, presentation and session layer work together. So they have a single functionality completed by three of them, right? Uh, like uh, that's how it works in real time. So we, we generally see it as different layers, but their role will be you, you know, like they, they do their activity together. So application, presentation and session layer combined will make a proper uh, application layer request actually, I mean application layer data actually. So when session layer receives the information, it will add session layer header along with uh, presentation layer header and application layer header and payload. Not only that, session layer will manage a session with the destination session layer, like destination that is 
this particular session for example i have accessed uh, a youtube.com page from there from there till the time i close that page every session is synchronized and every session is managed by every uh, data that is that data transfer is managed by session layer so session layer is basically as the name suggests it is for managing sessions presentation layer as name says it is for representing the data like compressed layer encrypted way whatever it is so now the information these three layers together will do a unique activity that's why in tcp ip uh, pro, uh, model right you will see application layer only application layer you will not see presentation and session layer because their uh, functionalities are united in this so in real time you will see the presentation and session layer data as application layer data okay so hope that's clear so far now let's go to the transport layer so transport layer basically what it does is it does two things whatever the data comes that will be segmented that is this may be huge uh, data it will break into segments different chunks of data that is segments every segment has some id based on which this uh, it breaks into segments right for example x data is bro broken into x1 x2 and x3 everything has an id x1 x1 2 and 3 right so it will be sent like this on the transport layer of the destination what it will do is it will try to uh, combine the data like x1 plus x2 plus x3 not like x2 plus x3 plus x1 because x1 has to be received first x2 has to be received next x3 has to be has to come next so based on what is the id provided it will try to uh, uh, add that uh, segments so all belongs to one segment or not all belongs to one particular window or not so there is window management and segment management in the transport layer so to simplify it is segment the data we'll see this detailed discussion about it when we discuss about uh, transport layer as a separate uh, in a separate video okay so it, it gen generally segments the data and it does flow control as i said flow control x1 x2 x3 is the data then it should not be like x2 x3 and x1 right so flow control and error control it, it sends some checksum based on which destination transport layer will understand this checksum will be helpful for this uh, error uh, i mean uh, for example i sent a message x1 x2 x3 right there will be some checksum attached to it so which will form a different data when the checksum is decrypted here using the uh, checksum the data is decrypted here it should be x1 x2 and x3 so it should not be x3 x2 and x1 so error control so how that happens we will see in a separate video let's let's keep it simple for osa reference model as the name suggests okay then the data is sent to the network layer so uh, coming to transport layer tcp and udp are the two major protocols of it okay now here uh, transport layer adds its own header that is now the payload whatever comes to network layer is transport header plus session layer header plus presentation layer header plus application layer header so this all together is application layer header generally so plus payload this is the payload for network layer so network layer what it does is it will be helpful for further breaking the segments into packets because generally network layer devices are routers and uh, sw uh, layers and switches so they work based on some maximum transmission units so every router in the network may not have same mtu sender may send 100 bytes of data but user may not receive 100 it may receive only 90 bytes so 10 bytes will be uh, this this will drop the packets if it is 100 bytes right so for that purpose what it will do is it will manage this it will adjust these things to some normal value 50 80 90 whatever it is so it will adjust to a uh, standard value and then it will send uh, it will break the packets into uh, for example if i am sending 100 bytes of data right it will break into 90 as first data first data and uh, first packet 90 bytes as first byte first packet and uh, 10 bytes as second packet so these two will be sent this is as peak packet one this is as packet two then at the destination they will be combined like packet one plus packet two again so it is it is for breaking segments into packets first thing and second thing is for routing so after my ip address so the major protocol in network layer is ip so ip is a logical address for a device so whenever the packet leaves this source right 
where should it go where, where what is the next router i mean do some uh, x to y this one so root is like x to z m n this is a root and there is a one more way, x to a uh, one more way there i can directly go from x to a a to y so it will find out which is the best route and it, it will try to send based on some protocols like we have multiple protocols for routing so ip is one protocol in lay, network layer and the ospf we have rip there are multiple protocols like that we'll discuss deep about different protocols that are present in network layer further and the icmp so there are multiple uh, protocols set then it will add its network layer header and it will send the data to the data link layer so in data link layer what happens is it will break the packets into ethernet frames where you have mac addresses that are specified so you will be, so uh, what happens is it will it will uh, attach data link layers header and along with the payload received the payload will be network layer header plus the remaining layer headers plus payload i mean top layers header right so that will be received here and based on uh, so there are some protocol uh, not only that in uh, net, uh, data link layer what happens is it will do framing of and framing and error uh, bits error detections and error corrections so that will happen here and uh, different utilities and uh, protocols that we have is vlan mac and there are many other actually like arc arc works in between data uh, data link layer and network layer so arc cannot be a particular layer okay and uh, not only that there are like lcp so there are many other protocols associated with data link layer so physical layer next the data is sent to physical layer so what what physical layer do is physical layer is basically breaks the data into raw bits raw bits which is nothing but some uh, data that can be uh, sent over internet so that can that can use some multiple mediums like electrical or mechanical mediums so like you have optical fibers you have uh, rj45 wires or you have bluetooth so there are many many mediums right so those all will be used as the physical layer and protocols that are associated it here is usb or bluetooth like there are multiple mediums right so those are all like physical layers uh, protocol i mean protocols are utilities again it adds its own header again we'll see what are the different headers and what the headers contain that in subsequent videos but let's keep it simple for the osi reference model for, as far this video is concerned then the data is transferred to the physical layer so physical layer on the destination side will receive the data so re request which are sent that will be combination of data uh, da uh, physical layer header and data link layer header plus network layer header plus transport layer header plus session layer header plus presentation layer header plus application layer header plus payload right so what physical layer will do for the request is on the destination side is it will remove physical layer header and it will process anything related to physical layer and it will uh, forward it to data link layer in data link layer it will ring data link data link layer header remove data link layer header then it will forward to network layer it will remove network layer header and uh, do any associated tasks and send it to transport layer or it will collect packets here and uh, in data link layer it will uh, get different frames and it will assemble those frames and uh, remove data link layer header then send to network layer network layer will receive different packets it will assemble those packets to form segments and remove network layer header and send it to transport layer transport layer header will receive different segments and they will be assembled again and uh, remove transport layer header and send it to session layer session layer what it does is it will try to sync up with the session layer of the source and it will uh, try to manage the session and remove session layer header and send sends to presentation layer header and presentation layer where the decryption are decompression whichever has happened right uh, we if we do compression on the source side decompression should happen on the destination side right because that is a data representation layer so it does that and it removes presentation layer header and it will pass the request to application layer i mean data to application layer so here it will find out appropriate application or appropriate point where the communication has to be i mean what what is requested from the source and it will send the response back to end point one that is destination in the second case i mean from where the request has come so in this whole process to summarize the thing 
application layer is helpful for accessing the resources right presentation layer is helpful for representing the data compression or decryption encryption anything it is session layer is to manage the sessions transport layer is for segmenting flow control and error control and network layer is for routing and packet formation and data link layer is for forming ethernet frames and vlan or mac addressing or different purposes or physical addressing physical layer is responsible for converting the information into raw bits and sending the data over internet so this collectively make a proper communication to happen and again when the uh, when the response is sent it initiates from here all the layers will add their headers and send it to physical i mean send it like this and it will go to internet and then it will uh, be received on the physical layer of the destination and it will uh, try to remove all the headers and reaches to the application then in my browser i will see a youtube page right so there will be some videos i can see i then i click then the request will be started like this and it will end here then the response will be from here then i get that particular video wherever i have clicked so this is how it happens so in further videos we will discuss about what is real time uh, reference model that is tcpip how it is different from osi reference model thank you for watching guys please share like